Kevin is in Richmond, Virginia. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Hi, doing well. How are you doing, gentlemen? Better than I deserve. How can we help? All right. So I've been a Dave Ramsey listener for probably a year, going on two years now. And after me and my wife's uh, second wedding this year, thanks to COVID, um, we ended up sitting down talking about our finances. Uh, we were fresh out of college, all kinds of fun, you know, college loan debt, bought a house, both have vehicles on loans, and I, I just want to get a grasp of the baby steps. You know, we got through the first one out of the book, got through the first one, was motivated, and we just cannot seem to get baby step two. So I was wondering what advice you can give to somebody that's struggling to stay on the grind of getting past step two, since that's probably one of the hardest ones. So when you say you're struggling with this, is it, are you not seeing progress, or are you just not doing it? Uh, I would say a little bit of both. Um, I'd put the blame on myself, saying that I'm the one that's kind of the the rational spender. Um, when I see a good deal, I go after it, and that's my fault. Um, but, you know, I recognize it, and I want to do better by it. But yeah, that's really the big struggle for me is that when I get a little bit of debt, I see room, and I try to fill it right back up when I find a good deal. Mm. Yeah, my dad used to tell me when I was a kid, he'd say, go clean the garage. And I'd say, well, are you going to help? He said, no, I thought of it. <laughs> recognizing, re he said, recognizing the problem is 90% of solving it. Yeah. And I've, I've already went through and kind of sold everything that I didn't need, everything that had a value um, within me and my wife's house, just to, you know, try to get some motivation, some extra room to start it get the ball rolling. And yeah, but then you went out and spent everything at Target. <laughs> it did, yes. So that doesn't do any good. You're just spinning your wheels. So uh, how old are you guys? Uh, I'm 24. My wife's 23. Cool. So what's your household income? Uh, household income, I would say, is around 90000 Good for you. What do you do for a living? Uh, you'll laugh at this one. I'm a finance director. Cool. No, it's not unusual at all, man. I had a finance degree and couldn't add up my own budget. They don't yeah, teach us. They don't teach. Hey, they don't teach us that. They teach us corporate uh, finance when we're getting our degrees. They don't teach yeah. you anything about personal finance, so it's not unusual. Uh, and what's your wife do? Uh, my wife's a teacher. Good. Okay. And um, how much debt do you have? Not counting the house you bought. Not counting the house, it's probably around. I'd say a hundred thousand. What's that on? Uh, so student loans for me is 75,000 for my wife is 36,000. She got extremely, uh, lucky and blessed and had some of her stuff forgiven. Uh, and then I have a truck at 25,000 and my wife has a car at 7,000. And then all the credit card debt is me at about 4,500. Okay. I thought you said a hundred thousand. Uh, what did, I'm sorry. What did that add? It, you know, it ended up being a little more than a hundred. Closer to 150. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here, um, in order to do your day job, you have to be more detailed than you've been on this subject. You have the intellectual capability to be detailed and to lay out a process and follow a process. You have emotionally chosen not to do that so far. An indication of that is I have a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt when actually you have about a hundred and fifty. Okay. Yeah. You following me? So oh, yeah. what you're gonna have to do is rise up out of the uh a little bit of hopelessness and a little bit of immaturity that you've described and say, Time for me and my new wife to be adults, throw our shoulders back because children do what feels good. Adults devise a plan and follow it. And I want you to pretend like I just hired you for $200,000 a year to fix this simple little mess you have. Because in terms of mathematics, it's a very simple primitive mess. There's not that much to it. The only problem with it is the person in your mirror. That make sense? Oh, yeah. I agree with you. This is all behavior. It's not intellect. You don't have an intellectual problem. You're very smart. There's not any question about that. Yeah. Kevin, have you guys been through Financial Peace University? 
Uh, we have not, no. Well, what I want to do is gift you guys Ramsey Plus, and that's the membership that will give you access to Financial Peace University, Every Dollar, our budgeting tool, the premium version. And what I want you to do is make a budget if you're not already. It sounds like you're probably not doing a regular budget. Uh, and then go through Financial Peace University with your wife, sit down, watch all nine lessons, and you've got to get intense, man. Because right now, I, I think we care more than you do about getting out of debt. And you've got to care. You've got to say, I want a different future for me yeah, and my wife. I, I got I to poke at you enough to piss you off. <laughs> I need to, I need to get you mad in a good way. You know what I'm talking about? Like like I like I'm the drill sergeant and you're in boot camp. Yeah. That's for the and so George is putting you in boot camp. Can you treat it that way if we give it to you as a free gift? I, I think I could. Yeah. Intellectually decide I'm in boot camp. I'm going to get my butt kicked here, and I'm going to do everything exactly as these people say. I'm not going to second-guess anything because I'm the guy who made a mess, not the guy who cleaned it up. But you're about to be the guy that cleaned it up. If you'll follow this exactly what we tell you to do, you're going to be out of debt in 100% debt-free in two years other than your house. You may or may not sell the truck in that process. I'll leave that up to you. That truck's questionable, but the rest of it is just you're gonna have to get after it and you know scratch and claw and keep your butt out of target. That's the thing. So it's a um, danger zone. Yeah, I mean you you know you just I, I, hey I'm just like you man. This is how I learned this stuff. When I first started this stuff, I thought that when you went to Sam's or Costco, the reason they checked your receipt on the way out was I thought it was federal law you had to spend two hundred bucks when you're in there. <laughs> And I thought they were checking to make sure I spent my 200 bucks. If, oh, you didn't. You got to go back in there and get some more peanut butter, dude. Get that five gallons of peanut butter because you hadn't spent your 200 bucks. Because I, I just went in there and buy crap. I mean, this dopamine rush that you get of just buying stuff. And, and those of us that are spenders, we understand that. But you've got to get up over the top of that and say, hey, if I can get my act together, if I live like no one else, later I can live and give like no one else. Changes everything. Turns out you can go broke saving money. How's that for a deal? <laughs> Everything's 100% off when you don't buy it. <laughs> oh, man. George, that's rather... I'm excited to be a sergeant in this boot camp. I've never been a sergeant. It's well, exciting. There you, there you go. Just work on it. I can, I can just see you yelling at somebody. There. I've got a great yell. Yeah, I bet. 